Hello everybody, this is the uh, second part uh, of the video tutorial for Lab 2. Um, in this part of the tutorial, um, I'm going to be taking you through a two-step spatial query. If you remember from the previous lab in Lab 1, we, pr um, we undertook a very basic spatial query uh, which identified all the towns in County Clare. In this tutorial, we're going to use the new data to perform a more specific um, spatial query. Um, specifically what we're going to do is first of all we're going to ask the GIS to highlight all the sites and monuments um, within the uh, Boyne World Heritage Site boundary and then from that selection we are going to select all sites um, within 250 meters of the River Boyne. So the first thing we want to do um, is just ensure that uh, our Boyne World Heritage Site um, file is not highlighted in any way. If you remember in the previous lab, we highlighted County Clare because we wanted to restrict our search just to County Clare. In this one, we're interested in absolutely any sites and monuments uh, which are within the extent of the World Heritage Site in both the core and buffer zones. So if your Boyne World Heritage Site shapefile is highlighted in any way, the first thing you want to do is turn that off. And you can do that by clicking your selection tool and then just clicking in the C or clicking away from um, any, any of the uh, data in the map file. And that will, uh, that will unselect anything. So you should be left with your map looking like this where absolutely nothing is selected. So we want to perform a spatial query again. And how we're going to do that is we're going to go back up to selection we're then going to select by location and we're familiar with this dialog box here we want to select features from the Mead Sites and Monuments record that are within although it might start off with that intersect or with any of these ones but we want to select that are within the Boyne World Heritage Site once we've checked all that's okay we can click apply Okay, and what this has done is this has highlighted all the World Heritage Site entries that are within, now all the um, Sites and Monuments record that are within the World Heritage Site. So if we open up um, the uh, Mead Sites and Monuments record uh, data set and look at the attribute tables, we can see that, and then if you click down here, it will just show us the selected ones. We can see that all these entities have been selected and these are a variety of things uh, if we look at the attribute data associated with sites and monuments record and um, it's giving us the class of monuments so everything from uh, ancient passage tombs to castles and um, to fish weirs and battlefields so let's close that what we want to do now is we want to export this data and um, and we want to do that uh, by right clicking on me the SMR going to data and export data. Again we did this during the last lab. So let's zoom to your folder where you're saving all this data and let's save this as World Heritage Site WHS SMR Sites and Monuments Record and click OK. Okay, so we can see that we've exported 196 features and we're going to click yes to add that to the map. Now the next step which we're going to do here is we're going to take this selection which we've just exported from the Mead Sites and Monuments record and we're going to perform a second spatial query and um, which asks the GIS to identify any sites and monuments within a certain distance of the river. Um, we could be doing this for a number of reasons and um, we could be interested in the preservation um, of sites in this area or in the risk posed to them by the river or uh, we could be interested in more theoretical questions about um, how these sites were viewed from the river or questions like that. So let's switch off the Mead Sites and Monuments record so that we just have our subset um, here which is all the sites within the World Heritage Site. Now to perform the second spatial query again we're going to go up to selection we're going to click on select by location so this time we're going to change from the Mead sites and monuments to the World Heritage Site sites and monuments we're going to say that are within and instead of the Boyne World Heritage Site we're going to move this to the Boyne River 
Now the immediate issue here is that the Boyne River um, does not actually have an extent as such, it's a line. Um, and as such, um, the, the obvious return we'll get here is that there are zero sites within the line which is the Boyne River. So what we need to do is we need to apply something called a buffer. We can do that by clicking this little button here. What a buffer does is a buffer in a sense um, extends out the river on either side by a set amount, so we're going to say 250 meters. And so instead of just looking for sites on the point of the river, what it's going to do is look for sites within 250 meters either side of the river. Once we've selected that, we can click apply and OK. We can see that the GIS has highlighted um, all these uh, sites here, which are all the sites within 250 um, meters of the river. So what we're going to do is we are going to um, export those features again. And we shall call this 250 meters boin SMR, or something catchy like that and then click Save, and then OK. We can see that it's exporting 34 features, and let's add them to the map. So what we've done there is we have done a two-step spatial query, where the first thing we've done is we have highlighted um, all the points within a certain extent, and the second thing we've done is highlighted all the points within a certain distance of another feature, um, which in this case was the Boyne River. Once that comes in, we can switch off our uh, World Heritage Site points, we can zoom in, and we can just see our sites there.